This question is asking us to identify what type of market structure is being described by each of these situations. We look at part A, there are two producers of aluminum in the world. That would indicate to us, because there are only two producers, it's more than one, so it's not monopoly, but there's clearly market control um, and there aren't many producers when there's only two producers in the market, so that would eliminate perfect competition. And so what we're looking at here is oligopoly. Part B says there is uh, price of natural gas is determined by the global supply and demand. Because it's global supply and demand, it means no one company has control over the price, which means there are many companies or firms in the market which would make it a perfectly competitive market. Part C, dozens of designers selling high fashion clothes, each with its own style. So there are lots of different designers, but each uh, firm produces a unique product. So that would make it a uh, com uh, monopolistic competition. Part D, there are many baseball teams in the United States. Each city has one or two, each selling its own tickets. Because there are one or two in each city, um, they are if there's more than one, they're not a monopoly, but there's clearly not competition in each city um, for baseball teams, and so they would be an oligopoly. Part E says there are three producers of aluminum in the world. Well, there's only three. That's not many. Each producer has some degree of control over the market, um, so that would make it oligopoly. Part F, there are thousands of farms that produce indistinguishable soybeans, so the products themselves are indistinguishable. Um, and there are many, many producers of the good, that would make it a perfectly competitive market. In Part G, a small town in the middle of Alaska has only one bicycle shop. Because there's only one producer of the good, we know then that there, that bicycle shop is a monopoly within that small town.